The Kampilan is a type of single-edged long sword, traditionally used by various ethnic groups in the Philippine archipelago. It has a distinct profile, with the tapered blade being much broader and thinner at the point than at its base, sometimes with a protruding spikelet along the flat side of the tip. Cam Pilan, is the term most commonly used for the sword in the Tagalog, Ilocano and Visayan languages. It simply means, sword. Unlike other common precolonial Filipino bolo weapons which were based on agricultural implements, the Kampilan is specifically made for warfare, used either in small skirmishes or large-scale encounters. According to Philippine historical documents, the Kampilan was widely used by chieftains and warriors for battle and as a headhunting sword. The most famous probable use of Kampilan in warfare was in the Battle of Mactan, where Antonio Pigafetta described Ferdinand Magellan being wounded on the left leg by a warrior bearing a large cutlass, which resembles a scimitar, only being larger. Among Filipino swords, the most distinguishing characteristic of the Kampilan is its huge size. At about 36 to 40 inches long, it is much larger than other Filipino swords, and is thought to be the longest. The Philippine Katipunan era bolo is commonly referred to as Luzon Matulis, the bolo has laminated blade. The hilt handle is made of carabao horn handle with copper guard and brass ferrule. The butt cap is brass with copper and brass butt plates, where the tang is peen. This type of bolo is similar to the one supposedly carried by Andres Bonifacio, as per photo of a similar bolo appearing in the books of the Filipino historian, Ambatho Campo. Balarao also known as winged dagger, is a Filipino dagger used throughout the pre-colonial Philippines. It is unusually shaped, with a leaf-like blade and a finger-fitting grip consisting of two horn-like projections at the pommel and no guards. The tang also protrudes at the back. The dagger is a status symbol among nobility and warriors and is usually finely worked with precious metals, ivory, and horn. The dagger was described as early as the 1600s by Antonio de Morga, where he details its use by Visayans in headhunting raids. It disappeared throughout most of its range during the Spanish colonial period, though it survived to modern times among the Mandaya people, where it is known as the Bayadao or Badao, a name also used for Gunong daggers. The Kalasag is a large rectangular myth motif shield used by the natives in the Philippines. The shield is made of hardwood and is decorated with elaborate carvings. The shield measured about 1.5 meters in length. Its base is composed of rattan wood which is strengthened by the application of resin. It was widely used throughout the Philippines for warfare. Datu Lapu Lapu was reported to have used this shield during the Battle of Mactan in 1521. Its shape is commonly used as part of the official seal of the Philippine National Police. Various kinds of kalasag are also represented in the provincial flags of Bukidnon, Maguindano, and Mountain Province. The Gunong is a knight from Mindanao and the Visayas Islands of the Philippines. It is essentially a diminutive form of the larger kalas or kris. The gunong serves both as a utility knife and as a thrusting weapon used for close quarter fighting, usually as a last defense. It is most often associated with the Maranao, among whom the Gunong was traditionally carried by both sexes, although it exists in other cultures throughout Mindanao and the Visayas. The weapon is generally tucked into the back of a waist sash. The Gunong is one of many bladed weapons portrayed in the weapons of moral and plaque that has become a common souvenir item and pop culture icon in the Philippines. The Gunong is a dagger variant of the Kalis, a Philippine sword derived from the Indonesian Kris dagger. The Gunong is most commonly found in the ethnic groups of Mindanao. The tribes carried blades as part of their regular attire, both as a precaution for self-defense and for accomplishing daily tasks. While the Gunong dates back centuries before colonial times, it became more prevalent in 1915 when General John J. Pershing issued an order outlawing the wearing of swords. Now unable to carry traditional machetes or broadswords, people turned to the Gunong to fill the gap without arousing the fears of the American colonial authorities. The Igorot head hunting axe was once used as a standard battle weapon for killing their enemies. The Igorot head hunting axe comes in many different designs. 
Each one is a beautiful work of art and at the same time it is a very deadly weapon. This is due to the fact that the Igorots in reality are very good craftsmen and artists. Their weapons are works of art as well as a functional tool. This particular one was favored by the Igorot because of its deadly design. This one was dropped by holding it high and coming down on the enemy severing off whatever part of the body it hits. There is a point on the opposite side. This gives the Igorot warrior an advantage for in fighting tactics. Also, the pointy sharp edges were known to grab the shield of the enemy to open their guard to go in for the kill. They were also known to penetrate armor and pull the enemy off balance to finish them off while they were at a disadvantage. Da Hong Pa Lai, literally, rice leaf, in Tagalog, is a single-edged sword from the Philippines, specifically the southern Tagalog provinces of Batangas and Mindoro. The sword's name could either be a reference to the similarity of its shape to the leaves of rice or to local green snakes, Da Hong Pa Lai, purported to be extremely venomous. The snake is probably green specimens of the Philippine pit viper. The Da Hong Pa Lai was originally used as a farmer's tool, for clearing thick grass growths. However, during the Philippine Revolution of 1896, farmers from Batangas soon came to favor it for its slashing and thrusting feel. The blade is single-edged and has what is classified as a normal blade pattern, that is, it has a curved cutting edge, and a back which is virtually flat at the tip. The width of the blade is at its fullest at the hand guard, and from there the sharp edge tapers smoothly, with only the slightest curve or belly, as it moves towards the tip of the sword. In contrast, the back of the blade only begins to curve downward as it nears the hilt, which in turn also curves downwards, completing the rice leaf tapering profile of the sword. The tip of this rice leaf profile is an acute and very sharp point, which gives the blade its penetrating capability when used in a thrusting motion. The balance and steep profile of the sword, in turn, gives it its cutting ability when used in a slashing motion. A callus is a type of double-edged Filipino sword, often with a wavy section the callus's double-edged blade can be used for both cutting and thrusting. The wavy portion of the callus is said to be meant to facilitate easier slashing in battle, since a straight edge tends to get stuck in the opponent's bones, the wavy portion allows the callus bearer to more easily pull the weapon out of his opponent's body. All the Filipino types of callus swords are both larger and heavier than those from Indonesia. Although it is considered to be a slashing weapon, the callus can be effectively used for thrusts and stabs. The larger callus was introduced back to Indonesia, especially in Kalimantan and Sulawesi. Pira is a type of Philippine bolo sword or knife characterized by a heavy blade and a wide tip. It superficially resembles a falchion but is much heavier. It is the traditional weapon favored by the Yukon people of Basilan Island. It usually features a kakatua, a cockatoo, hilt, which among the Yukon is distinctively elongated to function as arm support. Like other bolos, pira were commonly used as farm implements, in addition to being used in combat. 